Marquez, Lorenzo, Davizioso, Petrucci, Rossi, Vinales, Rins, Mia, Espargaro, Yanoni, Zarco, Espargaro, Crutchlow, Nakagami, Miller, Banyaya, Morbidelli, Quattararo, Oliveira, Cyrene, Rabat, and Carol Abraham. Those are your MotoGP riders. Those MotoGP riders are the face of the sport. But there's also legends. That's right. A lot of legends. Two strokes. Four strokes. Current legends. Past legends. And even fallen legends. We have the Moto E Class. The Red Bull Rookies Cup. With a lot of riders. Moto 3. With every single rider. Every team. Moto 2. Every rider. Every team. And every current livery. On the brand new engine. MotoGP, of course you've seen them already. They're back, and this is MotoGP 19. So MotoGP 19, yes, it's finally here, and I am just flicking through the menus to show you what is available in the MotoGP 19 package. We've finally got it, ladies and gentlemen. It's come back, and that's historic moments, historic riders, historic episodes. Exactly what we wanted. At least it's what I wanted. There's great riders in there. There's past variants of Jorge Lorenzo. Variants of Valentino Rossi. A young Marquez. Classic Loris Caparossi. Chris Vermeulen. And of course, the legendary Marco Simoncelli. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for Dr. Ace's MotoGP 19 review. Settle in, grab a drink, get your feet up, and get ready to review this game, the Dr. Ace. And so guys, here we are, in the customization suite. This is Dr. Ace in his racing form, if you will. Currently with the Skull Tag Riders, and as you can see, I'm Ace 47. Now I've had to pick 47 because of course the legendary Valentino Rossi takes 46. Now just to show you the whole hype regarding the customization. These are your preset helmets and there's quite a lot of them, which is great. And I must say the helmets on this game do like to look pretty decent. We usually just get the same, well, pretty much exactly the same helmets as we do in each and before, in every years before this. But it's good to see that we finally now can create our own helmets, demonstrated like so. Bearing in mind, this was just a draft. I am not creative in the slightest sense when it comes to creating helmets and liveries. I did it well on Gran Turismo Sport, but I can't say I did a good job here. But still, nonetheless, I had a quick bash at it, and this is what I came up with so far. Obviously I'm wearing this green and orange helmet because I'm wearing uh, riding with the Skull Tag Racing Team and I wanted to fit in, if you will. So speaking of the number 47, makes sense to go for 46 plus 1, since 46 and me, I'm an ace, that makes extra 1. But this is the preset numbers for every rider to use, and you can literally customise the number however you want to. So this is a great improvement for what we're used to, so as you can see there's pretty nice designs and then there's some I've dabbled in with myself. Uh, I really wanted pink, um, it's one of my favourite colours, and I wanted a 3D effect like so, but I wanted it to fit in with the Skull Tag Rider, so I went for an orange instead. And also looking at the butt patch, if you will, I was actually just going to go for the Ace, but I thought I might as well make my own. So I had a bit of a play around and I changed it to a I'm Ace 47 with a pink one, and then of course I'm, a, I'm Ace 47 with uh, a bit of a orange livery so it'll match the skull tag riders but as you can see a lot of customization options regarding your custom numbers custom helmets etc but a little bit disappointing regarding the actual uniform now as far as the gloves and bike, uh, boots go you can literally only change one color so unfortunately you're going to be stuck with either white and whatever color you want or maybe black and whatever color you want depending on what it is and of course the boots it's different regarding which suit you've picked. So, for example, these are the Dainese leathers, therefore they come with the smaller boots, which are strapped under the leather. And, of course, with the Alpine Stars, they have the... Well, they opt in for the boots around the leather on the opposite sides. And you've got the choice of three different boots, opposed to the one Dainese boot with uh, the Dainese leathers. So, again, it's a similar concept. You pick your colour and you change it around. But this is the, probably the most important thing for me, is the riding style. 
So you've got the balance style as likes of Valentino Rossi. You can choose if you want the leg out. You can choose to have your both feet starting off on the front grid and then how many fingers you want to break with. So as you can see with the different sort of uh, riding styles, you've got the shoulders out style, the body out style like Mark Marquez and of course the old school like Kevin Schwantz. I'm a fan of the shoulders out in particular and as you can see the demonstration between the each ones, it's pretty, pretty big. So of course, moving on to a new feature as well. Oh, this guy's also using number 47. This is the online creation suite. So that you can download others' work and people, and you can share your own work. It's pretty much exactly the same as Ride 3, but in my opinion, it's probably not as good. But the reason why I say it's not as good is simply just for the fact that you can't put official logos on it. So, for example, I wanted a Monster Energy logo, even the MotoGP logo, or Alpine Stars, or Dainese, or something on my helmet. Unfortunately, you can't do that. Which is thinks is pretty disappointing in my eyes. But I'm going to show you now the graphics editor. So this is how you can actually change the colour of your number, your um, your butt patch, and even your helmet. So for example, this is just one I've made. <laughs> this actually took me quite a while because I couldn't decide how I wanted it. But just showing you the actual com um, customizational options, it, it's not the best. It's pretty basic in the sense of... A game of this magnitude. I, th considering how good it is, because it, we've never had this before in a MotoGP game, I'm extremely grateful and I'm very happy with it. Although it could be a lot better. It's very easy to use and it's very easy to manipulate. However, there's just not all that many options. And, you know, um, and it does I mean, for example, you've got a green camo that I'm just going to chuck on here. I probably won't put it on just because I don't want to save it. Kind of looks like a Minecraft creeper, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe if I put it a bit fat, no, thinner, I guess. But yeah, that's uh, the number liver. I'm not going to change anything because I'm actually really happy with uh, the way it is right now. And it did take quite a while. But showing into the helmets now, this is the options you have. So you can literally pick from pretty much every helmet that is used in MotoGP. And you can customise it the way you want. So I've I used a Shark helmet, I've used one of the AGV ones. And of course I've even used the HJC. Helmet's exactly the same, and of course the rider stickers, aka butt patch as they were labelling it, it's pretty much exactly the same with all the same things. So for example, let's put a pink trophy here. wonder if they'll ever get a pink trophy on PlayStation. <laughs> I very much doubt it. And then let's put, um, I don't know, let's put a smiley face or a winking face next to it. Just to say, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> So if you wanted, you could have that on your ass. It's entirely up to you. So moving swiftly on, let's talk about features. This is career mode, and this is in fact pro career mode that I'm using. So first and foremost, you get a little bit of a news page, if you will. It's been in the games for quite a while, but I'm happy to see the Rossi's winning in LaSalle. Very good to see. And of course, your funky little calendar. Pretty nice, and pretty. I do like it very much. The slight little problem I have with this, uh, I don't know if you'd seen it there, we have Sergio Garcia and... Um, Tom Booth Amos leading the championship, but they were unbeatable in qualifying, and there I am in fourth place. Yes, Dr. Ace actually has a name, and that is my name. <laughs> so, I'm questioning a little bit about the actual logic of the riders, because Sergio Garcia has not been, even been on the podium, and neither has Tom Booth Amos. I think he's crashed more than he's finished races this season, no disrespect. And I also found a little bit of a glitch here, that only one race is completed, but yet Marquez is on 45 points, and so is Valentino Rossi. So it's as if like they've completed the Argentinian Grand Prix before they've even completed MotoGP's first race. Or the rest of the season, so I'm not sure on that one. But uh, here you can see it's pretty detailed in the sense of the actual championship. So if you're looking ahead and you're in Moto3 and you want to see who the top contender in Moto2 is, you can have a quick look before you move up there. So it's pretty nice, it's a pretty interesting feature. And uh, it does replicate MotoGP very well. And uh, excuse the hideous rider, it's a preset face. I did not edit that face. And of course, as you can see, I've got my qualifying objectives, my race objectives, and the contract status. And of course, you get research and development points from doing certain tasks. So in the career mode, I did a few laps, and now I get to upgrade either the engine or the frame. I think I'm just going to upgrade the frame because I did find it a little bit loose in the race, if you will. But looking again at the rider customization screen, I don't think I showed you this actual part. This is disappointing. Now, I think I think there's only 12 faces you can choose from. Number one, bog standard. Number two, just another generic dude. 
three, four, they're all the same. Where's the beards? Where's the facial hair? I love to sport a good moustache and now I can't. So, <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed on that one. And of course it's good to see that they've added female characters in it. I'm not sure if they were in the, in the years, previous years, but there it is. And don't worry guys, I've got you covered. I can hear you asking for some gameplay, and here we are. Marco Bezzecchi, Red Bull KTM, Tech 3, and Moto 2 in the Red Bull Ring, Austria. Finally on track, I hear you say, but don't worry, we've discussed the features and now it's time for gameplay. Probably the most important thing, but still, any features is a good feature in my eyes. The more features, the better. Now, I haven't, this is the first time I had to use the Moto2 bike. I literally just used it for the sake of this video. And listen to how beautiful that bike sounds. So I think I'm going to go a little bit wide here, yes, I thought I would do. Not my best corner to be frank. But I'm still going to try and finish this lap because, just to show you the sheer beautifulness of this game, it looks fantastic compared to last year's game. Now last year's game did look really good, but I do recall when it came out originally there was a terrible grainy, dark, dirty look on the, on the game and on the track, but thankfully that isn't there this time and it's beautiful to look at. And the gameplay. The riding maneuverability is fantastic, the handling is perfect. It, you genuinely get a sense of this bike is actually pretty heavy. Because the, the bikes have always been a little bit floaty light, if you will. And now it's not the same, they've actually got a bit of weight behind them and... You really, when you start to push hard, you can really feel the bike wanting to... Oh, 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 sort of, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to explain? It's very good, honestly. As a bike fan, it feels amazing. So I have nothing but praise for this game. Even the Moto 3 bikes I was finding, if I was throttling too much, the bike would be started to book and weave, and I would start to make some beautiful shapes out of that beautiful KTM and Moto 3. But this Moto 2 bike, I can't wait to move up into the next championship and actually move into Moto 2 now, because I am a big fan of these Moto 2 bikes, and I think... This may be controversial, but I think the Moto 2 bikes may be more fun to ride than the Moto GP bikes this year. I'm not sure why, but I just really enjoyed this feel of this bike. The Moto 3 bikes are a great laugh as well. Everything about this game so far, gameplay-wise, has been superb. I've particularly really enjoyed it. One thing I did find a little bit strange, the, the button to be to tuck in has been removed. You can literally only move your weight backwards and forwards, and every tuck in now is automatic. Something I wasn't really a big fan of, to, to be honest, but I soon got used to it and now it feels natural. But really, when you turn and really get the bike sideways, when you get the sense of the speed... I did see a comment on Facebook a few days ago on the MotoGP, uh, Milestone Official MotoGP video game page, and a gentleman was saying that he didn't find a sense of speed with the bikes, which is kind of true, because sometimes you go like 160 miles an hour, and apart from the wind effects, it doesn't really feel like you're going that fast. But I digress. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? So here's a nifty feature if I ever did see one, the ability to pick which sessions you want to do. You want to do qualifying 1 and 2 in the race? Fine, let's do it. You want to do just the first free practice in the race? Fine, let's do it. You can customise it every way you want it. And that is innovation. And that, my friends, is quite a scary looking Marc Marquez. Not the best design. So it's really nice to see we have a similar sort of layout as last year, which is quite realistic. And there's addition to sunglasses. <laughs> and even Lorenzo has a scarf. Little things like that is perfect. He even got his uh, Beats headphones on. Little details like that go a long way, and it, to me, I'm a huge fan of. One of my most favourite features which I am so pleased is part of the game this year, is that actually riders use different tyres. Now, every single session in every other MotoGP game has always been the same. They never use the same tyres you do, they just use one preset tyre, and it's very boring and bland. And these are all your tyre compounds. There's a lot of tyres there, and there's a reason for that, is because those tyres are there for the entire weekend, just like you would have in real life. They are giving a set amount of tyres, and those tyres are the only ones they're allowed to use. If you use all your tyres before the race, then the simple fact is you will have no tyres to run the race. Oh well, you'll have a tyre, but it's going to be near death's door. French Grand Prix, the riders are spread out on the grid. The light will soon go out and the Le Mans race will begin. 
Thank you, Keith Ewan, and welcome to MotoGP 19. Keith Ewan, of course, the BT Sports MotoGP commentator. But I'm going to have to stop you right there because the red lights are about to go out for the French Grand Prix. And away we go! Lorenzo starting from the back of the grid, of course. Do when we can. This is not going to be a full race. I'm just going to try and show you what I can just to see exactly how the AI works. So this is the brand new neural AI as we make contact there and Apollo Spargo went flying off behind and we're going to try and sneak up on the inside of Mark Marquez. And you will see the riders are quite are more aggressive compared to the previous instalments, which is fantastic, is what you want. And you do tend to find that the riders do make mistakes and they react to your your manoeuvres. So if you try and move up on the inside and they think you're going to touch or you're going to possibly crash, they do tend to lift the bike up or force you to lift your bike up and it's pretty good. Because it looks like I'm going to be a little bit wide there as Marquez dives up in the inside of his teammate Jorge Lorenzo. Not sure if I'm going to hold on to it. Uh, not familiar with the Honda yet. I've not used it. Just not delved into the Ducati or the Hondas yet. So a relatively decent start. Davizio leads from Nakagami and Petrucci. Not a bad. I mean, Davizio and Petrucci did take a second and third respectively in this Le Mans track this season. I'm going to try and close down Mark Marquez. Did get a bit out of shape there, and I think I'm going to... Yes, I thought I would cut the corner there. So as you can notice in the bottom right-hand corner, there is a brand new speedometer. Um, it, it's kind of hideous, but it's kind of nice, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because it's got a lot of features on it, so it's a little bit more realistic and shows you a lot more details. So in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the anti-wheelie, the traction control system, and of course the engine braking. Above that, there is the tyre wear, and I think the two Anton posts, I'm not actually entirely sure what that is, but I think that might be the tyre's temperature. I'm not entirely sure, though. And, of course, you've got the gears and the classic speedometer when to change uh, the rev counter. But also, you may notice a little green bar in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, the green bar is actually more interesting for you guys who are watching me. As you can see, obviously, it's red, and then another red. That's basically, the green is the full throttle, so however much you're throttling will demonstrate in the uh, in the green. As you can see in the corner in a moment, let's just go wide there. A little bit out of shape on this lap, actually. As you can see, I'm very gently twisting the throttle as Jack Miller comes out of nowhere there. And the bigger red liner, which is about to be red now, is the front brake. And the bottom is the, the uh, rear brake, which I have as the square button, respectively. Just something I've been used to. I think the default button is actually the X button. We've seen the Moto GP bikes, we've seen the Moto 2 bikes, so now it's time for the Moto 3 bikes with Tony Arbolino in the Jello. So let's go! We're starting from the back of the grid as a common theme now it seems, and we are going to see how aggressive the AI can be when you're starting from the back of the grid. Because in these positions you need to get you get you need to get where you need to be going. So you need to be moving through this pack. So we're gonna start pretty decent, we're gonna take a Oh Zagora! Dives up on the inside. Now, you didn't really see that in the previous installments. But also, i never seen this. Why are they cruising on the racing line during a race? And then John McPhee has to take evasive action so he doesn't clatter the back of me. So I'm going to bump into... Oh, bloody hell, sorry about that, pal. I'm uh, going to chase down Lopez and Cornfile. I actually made a bit of a boob there, so I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to dive into Casanova. And then we're going to flick it left for Savelli. Probably my two favourite combination of corners. So beautiful, and so good with the Moto3 bikes as well now. So I'm going to use the acceleration of the Honda to try and sneak up behind Tatsuki Suzuki, but we're not going to get him here, not yet. But again, they're going a little bit slow for my liking. I'm a lot faster than he is, but there's no reason he should hit the brakes that early. So I'm going to dive, dive up at the inside of Fernandez. Maybe not. Fernandez is a little bit stronger on the brakes than I was. I'm going to flick it left. Well, Pelagio. Oh my jo oh, bloody hell! <laughs> what on earth happened then? So I'm still trying to sneak up on the inside of Fernandez, but it's not happening, and as he slams the door shut in my face once again, I'm gonna try and maneuver him out of the way, give him a bit of nudge, and I also give Mino a bit of a bump. A friendly nudge, if you will. As we try and chase down a Yumi Sasaki now. On board the Sprinter Honda. Petra in a Sprinter Honda, should I say. Beautiful looking bike, because uh, Sasaki does not want to let me through. I'm going to try and get in as we slipstream here. But he's going a bit slow for my taste. 
Not sure why they tend to go so slow, but let's jump into the, um, the helmet cam for a change. I don't tend to use this as often as I really should. I do like to use it, but I'm just a big fan of seeing from the rear, just so I can see the rest of the bike and see the rest of the, uh, the track, and see how the bike really reacts as well. Because I do find when I'm in this sort of view, I don't know how the bike's reacting, so I don't know if the, if the tyre's really sliding or not. I mean, it probably is, and you can feel it to a certain degree, but I just more so prefer the outside view. I don't seem to be too bad in the, um, in the helmet cam, I must confess. I do a little bit better than I expected. So, into Matarasi, we're going to flick it right for Borgo San Lorenzo. And, of course, my favourite part of the track, Casanova and Savelli, about to come up now. We're going to lean into the right, gone a bit wide there, I'm not going to get the perfect exit speed. But, nonetheless, it's still decent. So, we're watching out for the corners there. So, all in all, MotoGP 19. Is it the best MotoGP game we've had so far? I'm inclined to say so, yes. I mean, although the hype has been real for me, I've been buzzing my little schoolgirl for the, ever since it, <laughs> ever since the postman delivered it a few days ago. It's fantastic. I've really enjoyed it, and um, if anything, I've actually really enjoyed doing this review for you guys. Now, this is my first review, of course, but uh, I aim to make this a regular occurrence. I tend to buy a lot of games. 486 now on the PlayStation 4 alone. Add another 70 on Steam. And had uh, another 100 on PlayStation 3, and a few on Xbox One and Switch. Uh, gaming is it's more than a passion at this point. It's certainly a lifestyle. So if you do want to see more content, be sure to let me know. And uh, of course, as always, I always need more support. So subscribe if you have got the time. Like and comment. Likewise. But we're going to give it a new, another few laps because I'm conscious of the amount of time I've taken of your wonderful people's time already. Let's do another lap. But I have a slight issue before I go. Why the hell is Tom Booth Amos the fastest man on track? Now I have nothing against Tom Booth Amos, but this is the same issue I was talking about earlier. He still hasn't finished a Grand Prix, I don't think. Or at least he's crashed most of him. I don't really don't mean to offend if I'm getting that wrong. But I just don't think he's a top caliber rider just yet. Give him chance, by all means. He he'll probably will be towards the end of the year, or maybe soon. Oh my goodness! Maybe that's the Tom Booth Amos curse. I'm talking bad about him, and he's and uh, my bike is losing its grip. I may actually start using the helmet cam a little bit more often because this is rather enjoyable, and I seem to be doing decent at it as well. So in career mode, I actually picked a KTM. So this is the first time I'm using the Honda, and now I'm beginning to regret that I didn't pick the Honda. So I won the Red Bull Rookies Cup by using the KTM, because that's standard in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. So as we dive into Arabiata 1, flick it right for Arabiata 2. Same corner there, Valentino crashed at the weekend. Sad times. Very disappointing weekend for the Doctor. But he'll come back soon. Bigger, better, stronger, faster than ever. If Yamaha pull their fingers out and actually give Rossi a decent bike. Same applies to Vinales, Quattararo, and even more Bedelli. But that's just my two pence. And it probably doesn't mean a lot right now. <laughs> but guys, I'm going to end it here. And I just want to say thank you. Oh my goodness, I did not mean to end it like that. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.